So uh, this is Catherine Lambrecht. Thank you for coming tonight for our show and tell program. I hope it will be fun. And if not, well, we'll still learn something, right? Um, but we're going to start with Stephanie Kowalik, who's going to give us an update related to the Chicago Botanic Show. Thank you very much, Kathy. Bloomfridge to tell you guys a little bit about what the club has going on for our flagship event at the Chicago Botanic Gardens this Labor Day weekend. So some of you may have uh, found out about the club initially through our show that we have there every year on Labor Day weekend. And we start off on Saturday, September 3rd with a survey where we'll be uh, collecting specimens to display the show during that time at Pottawatomie Woods. We will also have a grill party with uh, not exactly sure how that's going to work out uh, this year, uh, keeping in mind that everybody wants to maybe keep some social distancing and want to have some guardrails around foods, but uh, there will be a component of sharing a meal together at Pottawatomie Woods on Saturday, September 3rd. Following up the next day on Sunday, September 4th, that's when all of the excitement happens at the Chicago Botanic Gardens, where the club gets to further our educational mission of introducing people to the fungal diversity that's all around them. Now, what makes all of this happen? It's our club members and volunteers. So I'm here today on behalf of Lorinda Suze, our foray chair, long-term member of the IMA, requesting you, anybody who can help us out on either or both of the days, please step forward and give us a hand. There's lots to do on both days. So on Saturday, it's helping with the collecting, packing up specimens to take over to the garden, um, helping with the organization of the food and sort of the grill party. On Sunday, we look for people to kind of show up early and help us to set up. Uh, there's a lot to do, moving tables, putting skirts on the tables, helping with identification. During the course of the day on Sunday, we'll need some people to interact with the public and introduce them to the wonderful world of fungi here in our region. Now, you might say to yourself, I don't know that much about mushrooms. I can't interact with the public. But don't worry, just by virtue of the fact that you're in this virtual room here together with us, you absolutely know enough about mushrooms to speak and chat with people who might visit the show, even if it's just to share your own enthusiasm in terms of learning more about the mycological diversity that we have here. What do you do in order to volunteer? Very easy. You can email Lorinda Sues and also the Illinois Mycological Association directly. We actually ask that you email both of them and let us know if you have a particular role that you're interested in volunteering for a particular day and include your phone number. I'm gonna drop the details down into the chat. And then I know Kathy later on in the program will drop it in uh, maybe one or two more times to be sure that everybody has the information. Can I answer any questions about the, uh, the show right now? And what's involved in uh, volunteering? I'm gonna drop off uh, just a little bit, but definitely we have other people who are here who would be able to answer any questions you may have. Again, don't forget to email Lorinda and the club as the email address is dropped in the chat. And I look forward to seeing some and all of you at the Botanic Gardens September, 3rd, on September 4th and the day before at our survey. Yay, Stephanie. And by the way, you know, there's a ladybug crawling around you. <laughs> and the ladybug crawling on me and all over the mushrooms on my shirt. <laughs> Hey, that's a great idea. Um, so our program tonight is show and tell. And 
and I don't know, um, maybe people could put, you know, maybe put the little yellow, yellow hand, you know, that they want to submit something or not. But uh, I also do show and tell every once in a while at the Historical Society. And sometimes it's an interesting way to find out personal collections and hobbies that people have that you never knew about that later on they could come and talk about. Because, well, when you're in the historical society business, people always have something they want to talk about. They just don't tell you. But it's one way to kind of unveil it. So would somebody like to go first in the old show and tell game? Is that Neil? Oh, all right, Neil. Go ahead. <laughs> My little name is Neil. I'm Hannah. That must be the most little Okay. So, uh, so we can you talk closer to your microphone? Somebody, the committee, yeah. can you hear us? Can you hear us now? Yes, okay. So, yes, this is me now. I'm Helen. Yes, and we, That's we, uh, this we, is we, we this so is Neil, is Neil yeah. the, the person who's really gung ho about mushrooms? Yeah, or is it the whole family? <laughs> Uh, he's, he's the one who started. Yeah. Okay. So, let's start showing the pictures. Yeah. Well, you at least have a good book. That's good. Okay. There's also some really weird fungus tea. I found it. I found it. It's a fly aglet. So, Neil, we hope that you're going to come to future meetings. We definitely will. Yeah. So excellent. Uh, if, and, and, and in our December, and in the December meeting, we usually share pictures of mushrooms. So that would oh. be a good time for Neil to show us what he's got going. Okay. Can you share them in the chat? Um, I, I. Uh, <laughs> It's on my phone, and the phone is not connected to the chat. But I can email you guys the pictures later, um, or you can put it on our Facebook page. I can, I can show you. I can try to show you the pixels in the box if I can find them. Oh, okay. Um, I well. So I, I can see this is a family activity. Yes. Yes. So this, um, this one, if we misidentify anything let us know because we're just novices we just started and you know what and don't eat anything if, uh, if you go that direction <laughs> unless you're 100 percent sure and if you're even 95 percent right. sure that's not enough uh right yeah my my grandmother used to be a doctor uh in some rural places and people died and she treated people who who died from eating poisonous mushrooms then so you I'm understand sure. the risk yeah yeah, we're, we don't even, we don't even try to Okay, we're going to move on to the next person, okay? Neil, this is great. We're looking forward to your, oh, look at that. He figured out how to share. Look at that. That's somebody, what is that? That's somebody else's. Oh, somebody else shared this. Oh, William Becker. Okay, guys, I think we're going to turn this over to William. Is that okay? Okay, Neil, you're terrific. We look forward to interacting with you. So, William, do you want to talk about your mushrooms? Yeah, I, I, I signed up to be a mushroom monitor for Kane County, and I have never done it before. And I found this really weird looking thing. I didn't find it in any books. But this is just a picture of the bottom of it. Um, and I, I just call it a, a weird cap and stem. So can you tell us a little bit about being a mushroom monitor? OK, the mon mushroom monitors, they want you to try to find as many mushrooms as possible in uh, the forest preserves. And I, I'm assigned one called Bruner. And um, then you, uh, you, you go out there at least once a month. And you, there's an area of the forest reserve I'm assigned, and I want I wander around looking for mushrooms. And uh, as the season progresses, they've changed over time. The idea is that um, 
in DuPage County, they did this program and they had something like 130 known mushrooms. And I, I think they said 1200 or I forgot how many it, it the number of uh, known mushrooms in DuPage County went up tremendously from a volunteer scientist program that they, they sent them to professional people that, that confirm the identifications. So they, they've added Kane County into this as well. So who's, who's organizing this? Um, Barb uh, McClintock, I think is her, her name, with Kane County in the Forest Preserve. And uh, um, there's a, a biology teacher. She's a biology teacher, um, I believe, in high school. And she's working on a, like a PhD in mycology. And she, she's been working on helping identify them. I've forgotten her name. I'd have to look it up. Uh, Crystal? Yeah, I think it is Crystal. Well, so you have some he, solid people working with you. And I've been somebody who's always been able to wander around and recognize plants extremely easily and recognize different plants and, rec and, and realize that if I'm seeing a plant that's new, but... Um, I'm not picking up mushrooms as fast, but I'm 66 years old as well, so. <laughs> well, Charles wanted you to know that, that he believes you have an Earth star. I have a what? Earth star. Earth star, okay. I'll, I'll, I tried to share more than one picture. I'll see if I can share the, the picture of it growing on the forest floor. So did you get into this just to be helpful or did you have an interest before? Oh well, yeah, Earth star, yeah. That, that's that's what it looked like growing on the forest floor. And that's called an earth star? Yeah, if somebody else wants to add to that, that would be fine. All right. So, um, but that, that that that's probably the most unusual looking thing I've found. But I got into it, um, I retired and um, I had extra time and I was kind of interested and I saw this uh, notice about this program and and signed up for it. Excellent. Okay, cool. So I, well, thank you very much for your contribution. And, you know, uh, maybe come think about coming to our um, holiday party in December, because we have people share pictures of that one. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, who would like to be next? All right, I'll be next. How's that? Um, no. Okay, so this is a, a menu. It's uh, almost 40 years old. Well, it's 38. And it's from the Hotel Esplanada in Zagreb, then Yugoslavia. Uh, this was prior to the war. And I think Tito was still alive. So, you know, it was what it was at the time. Uh, but they had this mushroom festival with the 17th through the 23rd of uh, September. And while this is in Serbo-Croatia, because that's what they referred to their language at the time, um, you could see there are some mushroom names in there. Some of them are their common names. But what was also really cool was when you came into the hotel and, and went toward this restaurant, they had a display with moss and, mu and fresh mushrooms interwe interwoven. So you, you felt like you were looking at a forest floor. It was very, very, very lovely. That culture of say Slavic and the Eastern European, very much mushroom centric. So I knew somebody from Pollock, which is one of the, those lacquer boxes you often see, the Russian lacquer boxes. Um, I knew the head of Pollock and he gave me this for my um, birthday. And this is the, the 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 image of this woman in the middle is uh, Kat is 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 picking mushrooms, and since we usually talked about picking mushrooms, that was uh, something we frequently did. Um, so this was Katya, that's me, uh, Dean Rajdenia. So it was for my birthday, which was really really a, a charming little gift. Now I just want to show it to you. This is you know this is just lights above me but this is a picture i took in more less bright light so i don't know if that's meaningful but um it was really 
really wonderful gift that I got. But the, in this, in that culture there, mushrooms really are a big deal. Um, it's been suggested part of it is because of the um, Orthodox religion and all the different fasting holidays they had and mushrooms were popular because they kind of had that meaty taste to it. But uh, everybody seemed to have their favorite spot. I was the easiest person in town to tell it to. They'd even draw pictures and little maps. And <laughs> I was easy because I couldn't leave Moscow or any, a lot of, I was confined in a number of situations. So they could tell me anything they wanted. I never would find it. And this is a picture that hangs in our dining room. It's a modest little picture of Bolitz. Um, it was something my dad picked up um, at a street market in Moscow. And he bought it because he knew I would appreciate it. And I do. And he bought it by turning with the money he turned in our milk and yogurt jars. We didn't know this for many years that you could get money if you turned in the jars. We finally got clued in. And this was, I think, about 25 rubles. So I had to do, deal with a number of jars and things. But anyway, that's my, um, that's my, one of my key influences as to how I got into mushrooms was hanging out with all these people who were rabid about mushrooms and I couldn't do much except admire and listen to their stories and maybe spend a little fortune at the farmer's market. Anyway, that's for me, my contribution. Even a story doesn't have to be something you could show. I just happen to have something to show, but a story would be just great. I can share. Okay. I'm Liz. Uh, uh, Elizabeth's actually, phone? Yeah, Elizabeth's phone. Um, I actually lived in um, Naperville. I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, 4th of July weekend last year. So I kind of find you, found you guys last minute, like yesterday. <laughs> and... <laughs> I developed a passion for mushrooms on July 7th. Um, my backstory, I got a dog about six weeks ago and I started walking trails and just kind of, you know, just walking around and I started seeing different color mushrooms and the ear mushroom was the one that caught my eye. That was the very first mushroom that I saw. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? So I started taking pictures and in a matter of a few days, I had at least 20 different variety of mushrooms just in the area where I was walking and I was hooked. And then I just, my, my boyfriend bought me this book. I don't know if you can see it or not, if it's blurry. Can it's you see blurry. That? There it is. So I already found that mushroom in the oh, book. Oh, who this, wrote the book? This one is, it's, it says mushrooms, how to identify and gather wild mushrooms. I don't know who wrote it. It's FSC, okay. but this one, I, it's, it's got good identification in it. And actually last, this past weekend on Saturday, we had uh, Atlantic uh, Mushroom Market. So I got to um, talk with actual people that's been doing it for a long time and the people identified like different ones that grow in the wild that you can actually eat. So they have like turkey feet, they have the, the Reese, they have a bunch of them that I had no idea what they were. And I'm just, you know, really excited about it. And it's just right after the rain is where you can find them the easiest. So right after a rainstorm, they're 80% water, or up to 90%, I think. So the top of the body is called the fruit. And then the, underneath the ground is called the mycelium. And the mycelium is the one is the medical benefit. So I've, I mean, I've been doing a lot of research on this and that there's so much health and benefits for them. They're, the lion head mushroom is good for anxiety. It's good for um, like mental health. I don't know why I'm kicking, getting kicked off. And um, the Reese, they, they use that in oriental teas and stuff, just also for a calming effect as well. So 
like I said, I'm brand new since July 7th and I've already obtained that much information. So I'm very excited. I don't know how to share with this or I would share some of my, of my pictures. I'm going to the more in the chat, but I'm, I'm not seeing how I upload the pictures. Does anybody uh, know? Well, how? you go to, do you know how, do you have the pictures already like available to look at? Because you can yeah. share a screen and then just show Share the us. content. I can yes. share the content. Uh, share my photos. Let's see. Let me select some photos. Now, can you see the everything? No, we see oh. you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just put some pictures in that I saw from the market. It's just a bunch. So here we go. Now, can you see those? No. But you know what? You can always, you might, you might just show on your camera and your phone. Maybe just bring your phone up to the camera. Maybe we can see that. You've given Zoom access only to select number, manage, and then select. Done. So I can't, so I'm not good at this. Yeah, I well, gotta get on my computer when I do this, but. I'll, well, you know I'll, what, you got December, you can come to our December meeting and show us then. Yeah. I know you're far away, but you can still show us virtually. Yeah, yeah virtually. I mean, I, like I said, I just got hooked up with you guys. Next time I'll get on my laptop and transfer the pictures on my laptop, so. That's great. So, well, hello, uh, oh, here, here's Ro. There you go. Ah, there you go. <laughs> great, great. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ro. I'm from California. And um, I grow mushrooms. I've been growing since 2019. And... Um, I, uh, mushroom kind of entails a lot, so I'm kind of on and off, but I just wanted to show you guys what I've been working on. So um, I've been making liquid culture. Can you see it? Like, um, this is actually portobello mushroom. The and sugar water? Yeah. I think it's, may not be sugar. I forgot what I used. But you see on the bottom, the black, mm -hmm. that's actually... That's actually the gills of the portobello mushroom. So I just, this was bought from the grocery store and I just like scraped it and put it in there and just waited. I think uh, May 30th. But there's some tam on the top, but I'm gonna get rid of that later. But portobello is a, a saprophytic mushroom where they, um, which means the, they survive off of decaying plant matter. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to knock this on trees. So I'm going to grow this outdoors. So I started growing in 2019. And I've grown, I think, like five cultivars already. And they were all indoors, but I'm kind of over it. Like, I just want to grow outdoors. You know, I don't want to be overly sterile and all that stuff. Plus, I'm a gardener. So I grow a lot of things outdoors. And um, this is one... Uh, this is one chip one. This one is I started this. Oh, this is from October, but this one came from agar. I started this from agar. Oh, maybe I don't know. I forgot actually, but I I've been experimenting, so um, I've been uh challenging myself and trying to uh sporulate from like the actual food or spores or a dried mushroom even. But when I started growing, I bought like syringes and stuff like that. And then um, essentially I realized I was starting from first base, but now I'm starting from like home plate. I wanna start from the very beginning and whatnot. So have and, you brought them, are they always living in the, in the liquid or do they actually like totally fruit and no, they don't, they don't fruit. They're just surviving on the food source, the sugar and the liquid. And I use them for different purposes. So I have a lot of this going on, but it's not necessarily for propagation. It's also for other aspects of my garden. Um, I have you a lot asked, of, by the way, what you, you didn't know you could grow mushrooms in water. What else is in the liquid? Oh. It's just sugar. I mean, you can use different types of sugar. Sugar You can use like cane sugar. You can use agave. You can use honey. You can use corn syrup. 
you know what I mean? There's many different sugar sources, but it it doesn't live forever. So it's not going to, you know, it's not going to survive forever in here. It'll, it'll survive until the food source is gone. But I have a certain supply that I keep lined up because I compost. And so some mushrooms are saprophytic, so they help break down uh, plant matter. So it actually speeds up my compost. What's a uh, substrate that you use when you um, inject them in the ground? Inject them into the ground? Do you, don't you use the, an injection when you take them out of the sugar to put them into the ground? Um, I think you're thinking about um, growing different types of mushrooms indoors on grain, but this, these, I'm growing them outdoors and I'm going to inoculate them on a tree. Okay. If not tree, then mulch. Are you talking okay. like a, a, a like a stump, a branch, like a branch? Yeah, I have tree stumps and I have wood chips and live trees. So I'm going to experiment. But, you know, I think you're talking about with syringes. Yeah. Syringes are pretty much like people make this first. People make liquid culture first and then they put it into a syringe and then they sell yeah. you the syringe. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then mm -hmm. you propagate it like that way that you're talking about. Who am I talking to anyways? Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth. Oh, okay. <laughs> so do you have more to share, Rhoda, Rhody, or shall we move on to the next person? Oh, um, I'll just share some books I have. This is Paul Stamets' book, Growing Medicinal Mushrooms. I actually haven't read this yet, but I've cruised through it. This one, I started reading, Running Mycelium. This is a good book. Mm -hmm. This I, have, I had to put on hold because I have other things going on, but I've been highlighting this book a lot. I recommend this book. And uh, I bought this book, but it's kind of okay. Eh, it's like, there's a different book mm -hmm. that I have more interest in, but yeah, that's it. Okay, by the way, just so you know, our uh, club scientist, Patrick Leacock, um, did put a link in the chat, which you may want to save later. Um, with some uh, books that he recommends. Not necessarily all about this, but just as, you know, for, for other people to know that as well. Okay, well, thank, thank, you. thank you. We hope to see thank you again. You. And we're going to now move on to uh, Susan Kaiser. I wanted to talk about some books that I've been enjoying, novels, mystery novels with where mushrooms play an important role. The books are by Ellen Rice, Ellen King Rice, I reviewed one of them about five years ago for the newsletter. Let's see if I can show this, the cover of this. Mm. Nope, it's not. You, oh, now, now it showed. Okay. This one is called Lichen, Lichenwald. The first, one, the first one that she did was Evo Angel. And they're, as I say, they're books in which uh, mushrooms play a very in important role just because people go after them. Here is the, the second page in it. Let's see if I can get this to show. Oops, sorry, got lost. They're very nicely illustrated with various mushrooms and, and in this case, lichen. And they make a very good reading and you learn a lot about mushrooms in the process. I don't know if all of the books are connected. There's a lot of character overlap between the first and second. And I haven't read this one yet which came out in the third. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know where um, that came so, from. Elizabeth, you don't need to be sharing your screen when somebody else is talking. Hold on. Well, it's okay. I don't have anything more to show. Right, so but, but, leave but, Elizabeth but, up. Anyway, if you're interested in, in mystery novels, relatively short ones with interesting characters and a lot of mushroom collecting, it's Ellen King Rice. And her books are available on Kindle, and I think they're also available in paperback, but I'm not sure. I have all of mine electronic. Terrific. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I will um, be now, doing some book reviews for the news if Stephanie wants to put them in the newsletter. Yeah, let her know. She's she's already gone. Uh, Neil, uh, you're next in show and tell. Oh, so we can go again? Thanks. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> just for a, a moment. Yes. Uh, uh, if somebody wants to go, they can go first because I have to get my phone ready. I, I didn't. Uh, oh, okay, fine. Then I thought that was okay. Sorry. Uh, 
hold on, who would like to go next? Oh, geez. Um, Michelle Canner, why don't you um, unmute yourself and tell us your story? Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Michelle Kanar. I so I was at a I guess it was kind of like a class workshop thing, and this guy handed out like bricks of mycelium to people, and it was to grow mushrooms inside. Um, we got one that was for oyster mushrooms, but we kind of delayed a little while to get it going. Started kind of changing, got a little liquidy, started to see some red stuff in there. So we found a stump in the yard and figured we might just put it in there. So that's what we did. And I put a little bit of um, mulch on top and I've been watering it. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I thought better not waste it and kind of experiment, do a little experiment. So if anybody has any suggestions, I'm very open. I don't know if anyone's done something like this. If people wish to unmute and tell, give her suggestions, that would be just great. Yeah, jump in. Might take a minute. Too. Ah, Amber no. looks like she might. <laughs> It is not uncommon for people to throw their mushroom blocks outside that have gone off a little bit. Um, sometimes people bury them. Uh, mulch, since it's an oyster mushroom, probably will do okay with it. Um, it may still fruit off the original block. It depends on how much um, if it was contaminated or not. It sounds like you had something that is pretty normal if you don't open it up right away. It gets that weird orange liquidy stuff that kind of accumulates in there. So um, you, you may have oyster mushrooms in a while, just keep it wet because it's been, if you're in the Chicago area, it's been very dry as you know. So I've had bad luck mushroom hunting this year when I've gone out because it's been too hot and dry. <laughs> but good luck with your oysters. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oops. Who was that? Wait, let me go to gallery. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who it was. Thank you. <laughs> Amber or Lucas. Oh, Amber. Okay, Amber, yeah, I'll try that. And actually, I'll go out on water because I kind of missed today. So that's a good reminder. Well, we had, I, 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 when you talk, this is oyster mushrooms, right? Yes. Okay. So we had a woman mycologist, Betty Ivanovich. She's probably gone to heaven, but this woman grew mushrooms in her refrigerator. She grew mushrooms in her garden. And her son had a business growing uh, for the gourmet restaurant market, oyster mushrooms. He did it, you know, when, this was on the south side when there were the two horse tracks, like almost like across the street from each other. And he had used truck trailers with which he put in um, manure from the horses and collected mushrooms. And they had what, Illinois pearl, which was sort of a gray. She had a canary yellow uh, oyster mushroom and she had a pink that I recall. Um, and, it, and I went there once, it was in the middle of summer, this type of year. And, uh, and somebody said, oysters are pretty easy. Well, that's good, but they had, you come and there, you know, it's a hot day, right? It's 90 degrees. They had these piles of manure that were fermenting or whatever. They were steaming in the middle of summer. But it was really quite an interesting operation. And back then when they were still, you know, active in this business, when we would do programs like in the Chicago Botanic Gardens, if we were willing to come down to Sportsman Park, they would give us an inoculated um, uh, bale of hay and things would just be fruiting. And then I would take it home and put it in my backyard and, and watch it. So, you know, it's a fun thing to do. Uh, I was never as good, of course. Okay. Anybody else have off anything to offer? Charles, um, did I, you go ahead? I, oh, I'm sorry, this is Heidi Sela. And um, I just wanna share similar to yours about a menu where actually I was at the restaurant in Oregon. Um, is that okay? Yeah. Please. I'll, I've never shared a screen, but I think I have it here. So I'll try to find Give it. Give it a shot. Um, let's see. Well, it was right here when my daughter was well, here. Well, do you, do, you, do you have a, a, the, the copy just to hold up to the camera? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I could read it too. Let me just close this. All right, so. And what was the restaurant? 
Oh, it was called um, the Palmer House in Oregon. I don't know oh if anybody knows to it, but um, I, my mom and I had gone out there for a uh, truffle um, hunt and a gentleman, I don't know if anybody knows him by the name of Toby. And then he had this lovely dog. And so it was years ago and we went out truffle hunting. And when we came back, we went to this restaurant and when that time, that was all about truffles, even ice cream. I mean, they had made ice cream from truffles, if you can imagine that, but it was delicious. But I just looked it up now and everything is about mushrooms. So it's, um, it's not, it says Heidi's Three Mushroom Tart and Slippery Jack's Porcini um, Button and Mushrooms. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. And then Joe's Wild Mushroom Soup, um, puree of Slippery Jack mushrooms with a sunken, mm, some French word of mushroom risotto. And then it goes on to say um, pickled um, shiitake and beet salad with black radish, cucumbers, and some kind of, uh, so, let's see, and balsamic reduction. And then there is a second course, that was the first course, um, escargot with truffles and butter, black trumpets, and then there's sterling white, caviar um that's not a mushroom thing it goes on to talk about um metsataki mushrooms some kind of a veal demi glaze with the mushrooms and then northwestern oysters it just was so fun all these different mushroom recipes are like little meals that you could take off their menu and order um let me i'll jump into oh here's something with um truffles again elk tartar with truffle infusion. And then you got mushroom pate. And then there was, um, for the third course, it goes into lobster mushrooms, um, which is angel hair pasta in a mushroom and cream sauce. And then beef stroganoff with wild mushrooms over a seasoned rice. And then a fourth course, um, duck uh, breast Chinese five spice scented with uh, quince, but that doesn't have mushrooms, I don't see. Oh yeah. I, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you know if this mush, if this restaurant is related to Joe Zarnecki? I'm not really sure, but let me see. I have the because whole... he, his family, they had a mushroom restaurant in Pennsylvania, and then they moved to the West Coast. Okay, there is a. It's Joel Palmer House, J O E L. So maybe I didn't. I all I know about is this one. So we went there for the. For the truffles and then my husband and I and my daughter went traveling out there and um, I had to go back so we went back they didn't have so many mushrooms on their menu but they got to see the um, um, there was something at a museum um, it was a it was one of the biggest it was the biggest airplane I'm trying to think of what it was called um, the spruce does anybody know? oh the spruce goose yes so that was kind of fun for them I got my my fix at the Palmer House, and I got to go see that. Do you <laughs> mind later just putting it or put into the chat the name of the restaurant again? Because I want to look it up later. Absolutely. I'll okay, Heidi, thank you thank so you. much for sharing. Sure. Very much appreciate. We're going to go now next to Charles. Yeah, well, we'll see. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Let's see if we can share the screen and hopefully we'll be able to switch I just over wanna give you the spotlight once i uh, have to okay I i'm not sure how that'll work so if they're all on the phone there's probably a couple thousand mushroom photographs but i'll just share a couple that have little uh little stories that go with them if we can make this happen so let's see what are we doing here uh and that would be mushrooms can you see the mushrooms? No, we see you. You see That's me. That's very nice, okay. of course. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So there should be a way to do it. I can see these on my screen right now. Let's see. Maybe unshare and then begin the sharing process again. Because what happens when you when Got you it. do the sharing, you get to see like a little all the different screens available. Got it. Let's I think try that. I'm still on share. Oh, who's him. still on share? Elizabeth. Okay. Because it's still green for me. No, it's, you're not on share, I don't think. But I appreciate, the, I hope that. Well, this is, I see Joe, I see him. So that's part of the, 
<laughs> I'm there. <laughs> right. <laughs> we should have practiced this first. I know. It's, oh, uh... no, no, don't worry. That's <laughs> it happens. Right. And what you don't do now, you can do in December. There you go. So here is. We still just see you, just so you know. You are just seeing me. OK. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I can see me, too. That's the thing. Interesting. So how do we undo that? Well, I'm so sorry. It was I can see them right here, right in front of me. You have to share your screen. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Sometimes things are not as obvious as you think. Once you've learned it, once you've learned the trick, it's like, yeah. And then it okay. has to be highlighted your screen, the one that you want to share with us. Because I'm highlighted right now. Did he disappear? Uh, he may have. Yes, he left. Okay, so we go on to the next person whose name I forgot. If you could just unmute, then I'll see you at the top and we'll Oh, Charles is back in the waiting room. He'll be back. Uh, Am is it Amber Lucas? Who was it? Uh, Andrea Zellett. That's it. All right, Andrea. So there we are. Uh, Charles, we're going to let you rest for a moment. We're going to go to Andrea. And then we'll yes, go right ahead. Let me see if I can sort this. <laughs> All right, you work on that. If I can get some more light. You're, well, we just, we don't see you at all at the moment. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, Andrea, yeah, unmute, sorry. Thank you. Um, so I'm Andrea, I'm in Chicago. Um, I just joined super recently. Um, I really got into mushrooms a few years ago. Um, after spending most of my life saying I don't like mushrooms, um, we found a morel mushroom in the wild and my boyfriend cooked it up for me and I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever eaten. Um, and I fell in love and started finding mushrooms on everything I can and cooking with them as much as possible. Um, and I work with restaurants all the time. So got really excited about the seasonality of mushrooms and when they grow um, and figured it would be better to join a group and go on some forays with experts rather than wing everything myself. Um, because every mushroom is edible once. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 okay, you got it. <laughs> at least once. <laughs> so um, one thing I got really excited about was a local um, print studio in Chicago made these really cool posters um, of different like mushrooms and herbs and stuff like that. So I grabbed one to put up in my kitchen. Um, very excited about that and then have been saving all the books I'm hearing today to dig into some of the reading a little bit more. Now is that a locally made uh, yeah, it's poster? Called, uh, it's so, Do you mind sorry. putting it in the information about it in the um, yeah. chat because I think people will be interested to know about that. Absolutely yeah they're, uh, they're a print studio based in Humboldt Park in Chicago. Um, super cool locally owned little shop so I'll put a link to their stuff in here. Okay. Well, thank you, and we look forward to seeing you. Thanks. Okay, so now we're going to move on to Olivia. Oh, let me say that. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I have to try and share this photo, and I know not a lot of people are having luck, um, but I will try and share the content. Um, uh oh. You want to try again, Olivia? I, I am so sorry. No, I feel like okay. you should pass before when I wasn't on the screen. It looked like I was able to share the photo, maybe in the chat. But now that I'm on the screen, I don't know that I can actually do that. I oh, I um, I have to figure it out. Okay, and I'm, it's not coming up on my computer. But I was really hoping that um, you all could help me discern if it was a false turkey tail or a real turkey tail mushroom in my neighborhood but it was a beautiful big mushroom at the bottom of a, a tree near my house um do you have the picture in your camera and you can, oh well you're looking on your camera right now Never i'm mind. looking i'm on my phone yes and I, it's not coming up on my computer but um 
maybe I'll raise my hand or I'll come back into the chat if I can. Okay, pull it and up. you know what? We always have December. Okay. <laughs> or you come to a foray and bring your you bring your you know sh or you know share your image. Okay, we'll do. How's that? Thank so you. So Charles, Sorry. thank you so much, Olivia. Thank you. It's nice meeting you. Um, so nice to meet you. Yeah. Um. So Charles, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway i was going to just you know i've been with the club quite a while and now i'm living in northern uh northern lower michigan tons and tons of mushrooms and uh, i wanted to share one where uh the mushroom had actually killed a hundred year old hemlock tree wow and so that yeah that was that was pretty amazing so we cut the tree down. It, it had to go. It was too near the road and so forth. Big, big, tall hemlock and a group of four, a little grouping. The, um, <laughs> the next, it, nothing happened. We chipped down the stump and everything seemed good. But two years later, out from the ground come these almost looks like a rishi, but it's not. It's a hemlock, um, a shellac kind of fungus shelf fungus almost growing straight out of the ground on the remains of the roots so struggling to get up into the light so it could spread its spores as it knew that there wasn't much wood left to eat um, and it made some very interesting shapes on there um, another one i thought was very cool was uh, my father-in-law has a farm out in banister in the middle of michigan and one of his white birch trees died and over the years it began to fruit the uh, birch polyphore which I was just fascinated with because, you know, that was one of the mushrooms that was found in the medicine bag of Otzi the Iceman out in the middle of the Alps in Europe. And so we actually collected uh, probably, oh gosh, a, huge, a fairly good sized box of these things and dried them and tried to make them into powder and use them as, uh, you know, as they say, the bandage effect where you can peel off the porous portion from the bracket fungi itself. Um, and my, my, you know, my cute little nephew has some great pictures with the things larger than his head. These uh, were amazing bracket fungi. And then, uh, yeah, just uh, bragging a little about the chanterelles we found uh, last year uh, up in the woods out up the property here. So, uh, yeah about uh, I think it's around 15 pounds of yellow chanterelles and uh, some orange chanterelles as well uh, so it was a <laughs> it was an all day uh, all evening affair to get those um, cleaned and and sauteed and then frozen so that's how we preserved them but yeah so, looking so forward. What, what's what's the mushrooming like up there in Michigan where you live now it's excellent it's it's really quite good it's a diverse uh, wild forest uh, mixed deciduous uh, oak, uh, even some beech forest, uh, and then you've got a lot of white pine forest, uh, as well as some of the the C what are the CCC plantings from uh, from the 30s uh, with the red pine. So yeah, there's quite a diverse arrangement of of different uh, trees here, and the chanterelles, by the way, were found uh, primarily in a birch forest, so a beech sorry beech forest with uh, mixed uh, other hardwoods. Um, you know, years amazing. ago, we went up to Wisconsin because one mm -hmm. of our members had, a, you know, owned a number of those weekend homes. But may maybe we should do a foray near you sometime. I love to host. Absolutely. Especially in the fall. It's, it's really where it's at. Um, there were black trumpets. There were uh, hedgehog uh, mushrooms, uh, the handium. Um, quite a quite a wide variety, and, and including, like I say, the little orange uh, chanterelles as well as the golden chanterelle. So really spectacular. And, and and what is the attitude of the local authorities related to mushroomers up there? Uh, well, we've got the Mott uh, family that has purchased uh, hundreds and hundreds of acres of land up here for the conservation uh, conservancy, nature conservancy, mm -hmm. uh, and so they're all over there. And then the, um, the local area here, uh, in fact, the area I was collecting in is a part of the city reserve, which uh, is right underneath the water tower that serves the little town of Frankfurt here. So I uh, had yeah, public land, uh, no problem. Come pick. Okay. I'm serious. We might come to visit you. I'll, <laughs> I'll at least alert those that, that organize these things. Yeah, 
just let me know. I'd be okay. happy to, to arrange, help arrange things. And hopefully I can be there, I don't know, September, Labor Day. Yeah, we'll have to see what we can do there. Well, uh, I don't think it will be this year. This year will be a particularly busy oh, month. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. September, maybe for me to come go do the foray, that oh. would be ideal. If I can do that, we'll have to see. It's been a busy month for us as well. Excellent. Excellent. Well, nice yeah. seeing you again. Yeah. Yeah. It's mutual. All right. Yes. So Kelly B said, love Northern Michigan, Northern Mitten and UP. My first chanterelles ever found were in a beach conifer forest in the UP. I guess that will make you happy, right? Are there any more stories or things that people would like to share tonight? Um, can I share a few photos, a few more photos? Uh, I got my phone working. Sure. This is Neil's mom. Okay, Neil's mom, go ahead. So this is a picture that I was trying to show earlier. We were trying to show. Uh, hopefully it's clear. And um, they were excited about this. Uh, and then this is another one that we saw yesterday. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the park uh, at the end. And I think this one is called uh, the crown tipped coral. If I misidentify anything, let me know. And, and my son has been reading that book and he's five years old. So, so when we saw this, he was like, oh, this is a crown tipped coral. I was like, really? And I, I, I Googled it and it was actually, I think crown tipped coral. So I was pretty amazed. And then next to it are these really small slime mushrooms. And he said, oh, this is a chocolate tube slime mold. And I Googled it again. It's like, wow, you, you've been actually <laughs> learning this stuff on your own. And I, I was really surprised. And here's a video of him poking at it. And you can see the spore coming out. Do you see that? Like, mm -hmm. oh, OK, here, let me go back right there. Yep. So. So they released a ton of spores and we, we, we basically poked at it for a bunch of times and we were really amazed that, that um, yeah, we've never seen that before, a spore coming out. And we're not quite sure what this mushroom is. Uh, maybe somebody can tell us. Uh, it's really beautiful. And here's another one, right. Wow, uh, Rushula, according to Patrick, our club scientist. Okay, okay, both of them? Uh, well, the first one for sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then this is the, uh, I think it's, this is the first one that we shared. Uh, uh, by the way, he said it was two different Russians, those two. Oh, how, how, what, what is the difference? Color. Oh, okay. But then they, they don't have different names or do they have different names? Well, they're all part of the Russian family. Oh. Okay. So one's Gertrude, the other one's Ethel. I don't know. Oh, cool. Cool. Very interesting. <laughs> that, that's a joke. I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know anything. So I was like, okay. By the way, Patrick pointed out there's more than 200 species of Rushula. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And then this is a picture that my daughter drew uh, for this meeting. And the toadstool that we got, the, uh, this thing, we got this from the Field Museum. Um, and it's really cute. So, yeah. <laughs> and your kids are really cute. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But I don't think you got them at the field museum. <laughs> Sorry. I'm into Cordy jokes tonight. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. They, they, we love going there. And we really look forward to going out to forage with you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Does that kind of wrap things up for tonight? I think this was successful. This was really successful. This was, I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but you, you all that, you know, came to share something and those of you that showed up to listen, thank you so much. And please, please, please do helpfully volunteer for the Botanic Gardens. Uh, you'll just learn more and you'll, we'll be so grateful. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Anybody else have anything to share? No, I think we're good. All right, good night. Thank you, Thank Patrick. You. Thanks again. Have a good evening.